I invite us to simply hold the silence, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be. I invite us to join together in that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. We join together today, Good Friday, to remember Jesus' seven last words. This is an ancient tradition that harmonizes the sayings attributed to Jesus from the four gospels. Why do we meditate on his final words? To be with him, to reflect upon what was most important in his dying. to discover more of what is most important in our dying and in our living, and to be with all of those dying and who will die from this COVID-19 virus, and from all those dying from the virus, the pandemic of greed and racism and the plundering of our planet, plundering those most vulnerable and to be with all those whom, like Jesus, are crucified by the empire for challenging its inhumanity with love.
And so we, know, we join now in the ancient tradition of remembering the seven last words of Jesus. The first saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Then save yourself and us. So what is it that we are unaware of that needs forgiveness? And how do we forgive others for what seems to be unforgivable? The second saying, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. But the other criminal rebuked Jesus. Don't you fear God, he said. But the other criminal rebuked the first one. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Who is being unjustly punished in our times? And who is responsible for bringing forth the paradise of justice?
The third saying, woman, behold thy son, behold thy mother. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. How do we care for our loved ones now? How do we care for our loved ones after we die? At a cold winter station, breathing into a gloves. This would change me forever, leaving for God knows what. You carried my bags, you said I'll wait for you. You can do this hard thing. You can do this hard thing. It's not easy, I know, but I believe that it's so. You can do this hard thing. Late at night, I call and you answer the phone. The worst it had happened and I did not want to be alone. You quietly listened. You said I'll wait for you. You can do this hard thing. You can do this hard thing. It's not easy, I know, but I believe that it's so. You can do this hard thing. From the muddy ground comes a green volunteer. In a place we thought barren, new life appears. Morning will come whistling some comforting tune for you. You can do this hard thing. You can do this hard thing. It's not easy, I know, but I believe that it's so. You can do this hard thing. You can do this hard thing. You can do this hard thing. It's not easy, I know, but I believe that it's so. You can do this hard thing. The fourth saying. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabatani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When have we felt that God has forsaken us? When have we forsaken God?
surely he died on The fifth saying, I thirst. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, and so they soaked a sponge in it put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it up to Jesus's lips. What was Jesus truly thirsty for? What do you thirst for? If living was a thing that money could buy, the rich would live and the poor would die. All my trials, Lord, soon. The sixth saying, it is finished. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. What must we finish before we die? The seventh saying, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. It was about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. And Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands 
I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Do we have the courage to commend our spirit into the hands of God? I invite you to stay with us beyond the benediction for the postlude and allow the music to transport each one of us back to this place. Hear these words from John's gospel. And Jesus said unto them, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. <laughs>